Good evening, everybody. Recap. Wow. Okay, so waiting for Attila to hop on. Um, let me tag him. Where is he? Attila, Attila, looking for Attila. How's everybody tonight? I don't know if you guys got to see all the lives that happened today. Hey, John. Wow, I am home, back. Uh, we left at nine this morning. <laughs> what a crazy day. So, hey Kelsey, where are you going? I seen your post, I hopped in, seen your post driving somewhere. Um, I am still literally, haven't even undressed. I just walked in the door from, we just got back from Edmonton. I am exhausted. It was a two hour drive back. We spent, um, we start, we left the house at nine this morning and got to Edmonton about two o'clock. There he is. Okay. Adding Attila. What's, what's up everybody? Attila's coming on. We're going to do a live tonight doing a recap. We need a name for the show because it's going to be a weekly show. There he is. What's up? How are you? I'm doing all right. How are you? I'm good. I'm, I literally walked in the door and I am like still dressed the way I was all day. Oh yeah? I am so tired. I bet you are. What time did you guys leave? Well, we left this morning and it took, it took till two o'clock to get there and it's a two hour drive. Right. I, yeah, I heard you say that on uh, on one of the lives. So, yeah, talk about a convoy. We had no idea. They figured there was at least 20,000 people. And we lost him. Where'd he go? Tilla, come on in. Um, see if I can get him back on. Invite. Oh, invite. 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 Okay, not happening. There he is. Okay, adding him back. How's everybody? Hi, John Paul. Yes, I am. There okay. you are. All right, can you hear me? I can. Did we lose you? Yeah, you know, I had a little notebook like app downloaded to my phone and I want to switch to it real quick where, you know, I got like highlights of this and that and uh yeah it disconnects from this oh like, what I, uh you know it sucks you can't flip screens i know yeah that's that's dumb stupid it facebook is. they find a thousand way a thousand one ways to spy on you but they can't have you flip screen you know what i mean zucker ding zucker ding zucker ding huh that would be convenient that would have been very convenient yeah so now i have to go off memory i don't know i'm i'm oh. old now <laughs> oh wait i was gonna go over some stuff too but um well first yeah. of all we got to start with happy canada day happy canada day <laughs> that's yes. right yes there you go there i have you go. never been a happier canadian you know what this is really pissing me off i can't so i have just i was just trying to go through just the speakers but every time I'm speaking, it cuts you off. And then when you speak, if you're speaking the same time I am, I can't hear what you're saying. And then when it comes back in, there's like a split delay. So I end up missing half of what you say. So I'm going to try to use the headset thing. I got these earbud things, but I can't stand earbuds, but I'm going to try it anyway. Let me, let me in too. All right, hang on. Yeesh. Now you're looking at my <laughs> ceiling. Technology, everybody. Hi, how you, Bob? Brent? Now what happened? Now I can't hear you at all. Hey, Randy. Ah, there we go. He, so, Randy jumped in. He's my cousin. He is up in uh, Ottawa right now with his nice. truck. Oh, nice. Uh, I just got back from Edmonton. We figured we might have 20,000 people. So, how trucks? You're cutting, up. you're cutting out a lot, Judy. I, I, I guess that's you. Okay, let's try this. 
All right, let's let's see how strong your Wi-Fi is. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> is that okay? So is this better? You were, you were saying you were yeah. So far it is yeah. You were. I'm gonna have to hold. I'm gonna have to hold my phone because this is not working. All, All right. right. That's so, what I'm doing. <laughs> wow, technology. So you said, okay. You said, you said you have a cousin on here who was. Yes, who's in Randy. Ottawa? Randy. Randy just jumped on. He is in Ottawa with his trucks right now. Him and a bunch of awesome. uh, my cousins, my uncles. So I just seen him hop on. I've been watching your lives, guys, since we left Edmonton. I just got back. Uh, amazing turnout here. So well, just happy wondering Canada how... Day to all of them. Yes. And happy everybody Canada up, Day. Everybody, everybody up in the north of us, you know. And That's just right. Know, just, know, just know that, you know, it, at least half of the United States is with you. Yes. More than that, everyone. I would, I would say pretty much anybody. See. Yeah, everybody who can see, anybody who voted for Trump, which is like you know seventy-five to eighty percent of the country, is with you. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> and oh actually, that's why we're going on a little bit later tonight. We, we were originally going to go like seven o'clock Eastern time, but then Judy had to get back from uh, Edmonton, which you that's know, right. And then by the time she got back, Trump went on to speak. So I was like, okay, let's just go after Trump. I'm not going to try to compete with that guy. <laughs> no. <laughs> By the way, That's right. you missed Don Jr.'s speech. He was up there, he gave like a five, ten minute speech. It was outstanding. He was hilarious. He was hilarious. He, he had the best line. He had the best line. He said, You know how Joe Biden was saying he was going to fix this, fix that? He said, The only thing Joe Biden fixed was the election. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Oh, That's man, good. that was I gold. I almost fell out of my chair laughing on that one. That's <laughs> awesome. Oh, my gosh. Hey, Marlene. We just got back from Edmonton. She's another Edmonton person. Nice. Wow. By the way, I'm very happy. I'm very happy with the Edmonton Oilers being a better team once again. I really, really am because I'm kind of a hockey purist. And, and going back to the you know 80s of the Edmonton Oilers with Gretzky and Messier and all those cats, uh, and then the way they were broken up, I was just talking to my brother about this. We were talking about this the other week. I was like, I feel so bad for Edmonton because they had literally like the greatest, one of the greatest teams ever. I mean, everybody on that team from Grand Fuhrer on out is probably like a Hall of Famer, right? And, right? and then they all had to be broken up and sent away. I mean, you take the greatest player in the game, you send him to Los Angeles. Then you got, you know, Messier and Leach and all these other guys going to New York and uh, different places. And they literally broke up a team that probably could have won like three more cups, you know, yeah. oh and my it, gosh. they had to do it because of the finances of the game at the time. And I was like, I feel so bad for Edmonton and they've sucked since they haven't had like yeah. a decent team. So now with Conor, know, Mc, right? now with Conor McDavid up there, who I swear is the next Mario Lemieux, this kid's unbelievable. Oh uh, my his gosh, speed, McDavid his speed is amazing. Is, oh, he's, he's like, I swear to God, everybody looks in slow motion around him. When I watch yeah. him, like what was so funny is when I watch, I was, I'm a huge Lemieux fan, obviously being in Pittsburgh and watching Lemieux, he, he like moved in slow motion, but yet everybody around him couldn't keep up. It was so right. weird because he was tall. He was so bigger, bigger than everybody else. So he was like literally just kind of casually going down the ice and people like hauling ass to keep up with him. And by the way, right. <laughs> I, I have met Lemieux and he and I walked next to each other and I literally had to take two steps to every step he took. He is a tall guy. Okay. He's a tall guy. That's crazy. But, but like with Connor McDavid, he is faster than everybody else. He is just zoop, zoop, yes. So I love watching a kid, yeah. man. So the kids soon, love him too. The you kids know what? Are Once they him. get some more yeah. pieces around him and they get him a better third and fourth line, I yeah. see I see a cup in Edmonton's future within the next five years. I really do. Absolutely. So anyway, so I know, let's I know get back that to the topic into, on hand. <laughs> yes. And and if you want to lead into that from where you were, we want to come circle back to the NHL. The, and, the, and, and we, we will watch. circle back to the NHL okay. again. But let's let's go with you first. Let's let's so find out Randy what's going just, on in Ottawa and yeah, Randy just popped in. He said, hi, we are three kilometers from Parliament right now on the Sir John A. McDonald Street. Are you guys still moving? Like, you've been in Ottawa all day trying to get to the center. Or are you guys parked? Fill us in, guys. Fill us in. All right, so what's going on in Canada? You know how many people jumped on today? I was really severely shadow banned all day. I mean, I, I know I wasn't getting the views. Like, I know I wasn't. For the amount of live right. I did, I should have had a lot of views, and we didn't. So... Uh, guys, if you're seeing any lives at all, not even my own, please share them and give them a lot of love because we are being majorly shadow banned up here right now because they they don't want to they they don't want the world to know what's going on. 
Oh, but they know. So they know. That's the thing. That's the truth. They know. The we, world knows what's happening. We do. It's too late. <laughs> Like yeah. I was saying, uh, I don't know whether it was you I was saying this to, but somebody, I was speaking with somebody just like yesterday or whatever. And I said, you know, the biggest mistake the Rothschilds and the Medici's and these big banking families, the banksters have made was allowing the internet to happen. They really messed up. They didn't see it coming. And ergo, what they wanted to do is create their great reset is dead. It's dead in the water. Yeah. And yeah. it's because you know, anything, something happens in like a tiny village in Africa and there are 50 people standing around with telephones. Yeah. <laughs> nobody's, yeah. nobody's helping the person, but they're all filming what's happening. <laughs> so exactly. That's the world yeah. we live in. That is. So yeah, today was pretty crazy. Um, uh, it literally feels like Canada Day. We, I have never in my life. Well, it was Canada Day, right? <laughs> it was. Yeah. I've never in my life seen this many flags, Canadian flags, people honking. You know, I, I'm, I, I am permanently conditioned now, um, permanently uh, ruined forever in terms of if someone ever honks at me again in traffic, I will shout, yay, freedom, and then go, <laughs> oh, shoot, sorry, I probably was supposed to move ahead. That That's how it is. Like, it was like honking nonstop. It was... I, I know. Uh, I we, heard it on we, we burnt out our flashers. We, yeah, you heard the lies. <laughs> yeah. the, I, I'm telling you, yeah. the trucks, the sound of the trucks, it's like the sound of freedom. It just sounds yeah, like freedom. Is. Like, yeah. we needed our yeah. voices heard, and yeah. they're loud enough that we heard we heard it. Like, that sound yeah. is in the back of our head forever. Like we made history today. And I was saying to somebody, I'm on the way back and I'm like, you know, I had so many people saying, thank you for showing up or thank you for coming. Thank you for documenting it. And I'm like, I have been speaking freedom so before it was cool to talk freedom. Like I, I've been talking this project with, I mean, the barefoot CEO, that was my name. And people would ask me like, what does that mean? And I was like, it means freedom. It means freedom in everything. It means unattached. It means de-governed it means unattached to suppression that's what it means to me and so for all this time before it was cool i'm talking freedom so i'm like do i need to rebrand myself and i'm like yeah. no I, d I don't even need to but that's what this has been about right so it's it's so not, cool not, and I now thought, you're free canada judy yes so i'm like <laughs> i can't not go i can't not go because I've been sitting on the couch. Well, I haven't for two years. I shouldn't say I have because I've been traveling across the border and trying to right. break this apart for a while. But I feel like I haven't gone to any rallies because they were all like 10, 15 people. And I'm like, nobody's listening. We need all of us to show up. And then yeah. now when this happened, I'm like, now's my chance. Yeah. I wanted to go to Ottawa. I couldn't. But and if, if I don't know, Ottawa's Randy would go up here right? sooner. What's that? You're, you're pretty far from Ottawa, though. Yeah, it's like a five-day uh, five drive. I think Randy can, if he's still on here, can he's, tell us how many days it took to get there. But, he is on there. Um, Actually, Randy said earlier that he's now stopped. They're stopped. They're, like, sitting in traffic. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. Was it? So the, it was uh, like, okay, I couldn't here, he wrote, not he wrote, show up. solid, nothing is moving. That's what he wrote. Is that, see, I can't see any more. I can't see any more comments. I don't yeah. know. Sorry, guys. So maybe you can. Denise, tell about Denise, hey, Denise is on here. Our girl from oh, Vegas. Oh, hey, Denise. <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, she's oh, on Oh, that's, that's who, Denise. Okay, I'm glad yeah. you are too, Denise. She never knew um, you were in Canada. But I couldn't not go. I couldn't yeah. not go, guys, because it, it was testament to everything I've been speaking about, and it it felt like I, um, I wasn't supporting what I've been talking about all this time if I didn't show up. So, right. anyways, pretty and amazing. Trump, Trump, Trump gave a shout-out to the Canadian truckers. He did. Yeah. He did. Yep, he sure did. Whoa. You know, you kind of so, knew that was coming at some point, though. And I would like yeah. to, I think, uh -huh. I think I got to say my favorite thing he said, though, actually, the one thing that really raised my ear, and I don't know if you caught it, but he said, mm -hmm. uh, I'm a great predictor. Watch what happens to China and Taiwan oh, yeah, after the Olympics. Right. Uh, so exactly. that's very interesting. So now I'm like, I can't wait for the Olympics to be over. I'm not an Olympics fan anyway. So now You know, I, just I used to watch them. Well, when I was a kid, so him. did I. When Not I was a kid. anymore. But it's so it, uh, it's all it's all uh, politics anymore, you know. So yeah, it leaves yep, a bad exactly. taste in my mouth when I see this shit. I'm like, get out of here, man. You know, I mean, <laughs> every athlete on there is on dope, and then they're gonna single out somebody, and every now and then make an example of them. I mean, that's pro sports anymore. Not even just an amateur. It's politics. It's like they're all dope. It is every one of them, and then they'll you know single somebody out. Get out of here with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So exactly. That's exciting. 
damn it. So I what were the topics that we wanted to talk about I so we can remember. stay on course? <laughs> Oh my gosh! I know we wanted to. Let me. I can go into well, one our of the history. Things, one of the things I can actually talk about is, uh, you know, we can talk about the illegality of this current U.S. government, uh, because the thing is, like, this government is over. It's finished. So, for most people who don't know, in the in the Act of 1871, the Rothschilds and the banking families, which includes the Venetians with the Medici family and the Borgia family, and you know, about ten other you know families out of Italy, who I believe have all been taken out already. Um, yeah, I agree with you. They, uh, they, they basically stole the United States, turned it into a corporation, made us all debt vessels floating in, in the sea, and captured us, and we have been their uh, captors ever since. So you, haven't, you weren't born. If you were born in the United States or came into the United States, you weren't born into you know, the same United States that the Founding Fathers created. Okay, that was Correct. a Republican, that was the, uh, what should we call it? That was a constitutional republic that they created. The United States of America Corporation was created in 1871, and that literally the Bank of England uh, owns, well, owned uh, the United States. All the way up to this New Year's Eve is when it, it fell apart. The United States of America went bankrupt. They couldn't pay off their debt, and boom, and they went bankrupt, so the corporation no longer exists. So now you have everybody in D.C., and they're not even in Washington, D.C., let's face it. They're in like green screen no. studios all over the damn world. But um, there, but but it doesn't exist. There's no such thing. How do you retain all of this? What? How do I remember it all? <laughs> because I'm a history buff. <laughs> but I'm I'm very so so. In the real you, if you see comments, if you see comments, tell let me know because for some reason I literally catch some of them. I'm getting really? some. I'm not getting. Literally, oh, okay. I cannot see the yeah. comments you're talking about. So anyway, the the thing people need to understand is the United States of America Corporation no longer exists. So uh, let me ask this, who are you paying taxes to? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Seriously, where's that money going? Because the corporation no longer exists. So they're, they're defunct. So where's the tax money going? Now, my understanding is that we are back to being a United, uh, the uh, United States a Constitutional Republic, right? That's my understanding. But you still have these guys running around pretending like Joe Biden is the president of the United States of America Corporation, which no longer exists. It's literally like, you know, my company went bankrupt, but I'm still walking around pretending to be the president of the company or the CEO. Yeah. Well, yeah. of what? So yeah. what would happen? I, I'm just curious. What would happen if people just didn't pay their taxes? Just stopped. Mm -hmm. And I know yeah. lots aren't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Well, this is right. It's going to the elites. Well, it always has. Yeah. And that, well, that always was the case. But, but the point being, is that, you know, it no longer, hey, Robert Werner, my man. Oh, Bobby. You have to feed, hey, Robert, I, you have to feed me all the love. I, I see, I don't see anything. <laughs> Jeff German just jumped in. Okay. I see um, Denise's comments. I'm getting money back, so yeah. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Well, that's good. Actually, that's awesome. actually, that's good, but it's not good. Because all that means is they stole more money from you than what you actually owed. And, uh, and they're just know, appeasing you a little bit. Yeah, well, they're giving you back a little bit, but they're not going to give you the interest. See, if, if you would have held the money for as long as they have, and then you paid them, you would have had to pay all the interest that accrued. But when the IRS gives you back that money, you don't get that interest. So, you know, they're a bunch of fucking thieves is what they are. Okay? Yeah. Pardon my language. Yep. <laughs> so, so that's the biggest Saturday thing. Night, the, our Saturday night lives are not kid friendly. <laughs> FYI. Definitely not, because I'm on here. Be glad my brother's not part of this. <laughs> He's the real sailor, sailor in the family. Thank you, but, Thomas, for sharing. Yes, thank you, thank you, guys. We are at 11 yes, views. That you. is more than I've had all day. <laughs> Ridiculous, but, guys. Anyway, yeah, so the point of the whole thing is that, you know, things are coming to a head. This is all coming to a head. Uh, we're not that far from actually getting rid of all of the elites and, and their, uh, you know, rat ways. People have been getting arrested left and right. And I don't know if you guys have been paying attention. So we just had a bridge collapse here in Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh yesterday, right? The bridge is literally five minutes from my house. All I do is get on Beachwood Boulevard and go down literally for like five minutes and boom. It's, it, I make a right, go down Forbes, and there's the bridge that collapsed. Now, interestingly enough, call me a crazy conspiracy theorist. Now, we do have the most bridges in the world. There's been great debate going on back and forth between Pittsburgh and Venice, Italy, as to who has the more bridges. I say we do, but whatever. They'll tell you they do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, so, but, but to be fair, many of our bridges are in terrible condition. 
okay? Because the can gets kicked. And these mayors don't do anything. They're completely useless. This new guy, we just, this new guy we just got into office. He's more. He's he already came in with a rap sheet. He's being under investigation, but he's a Democrat. Ergo, the idiots here had to vote him in because God forbid the people of this city vote anything but Democrat. They haven't seen anything but a Democrat mayor since like 1954. Okay, yeah. that's the idiotic Democratic stronghold that we're dealing with here. And I'm not a Republican. I'm actually a registered Democrat, but I hate both sides. I don't. I don't like either party, okay? The two-party system is here for one reason, divide and conquer. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. The one guy is always, one, you know, whoever's in power is always being blamed, and the other guy goes in. Except here, <laughs> down with Democrats, says Denise. Yeah, well, I'll tell you <laughs> what. I'll tell you what. I called out the Republicans back in the early 2000s when they went crazy. The Christian right kind of got in there and, you know, uh, took that party over. Now, though, what the Democrats have done now is straight up, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. They completely sold out to the communists, absolutely sold out. This country, the Democratic Party has been hijacked from top to bottom, all right, by these communist ideas that they're pushing on the United States. And, and here's why they want to take down the United States, because they know that in order to be able to take over the world, the United States must submit. It must submit. And uh, I think, was it? Were, were you and I talking about this, Judy, um, where, uh, you know, we we're seeing all the countries around the world with the uprisings. And by the way, Kazakhstan yes. has been my favorite uprising so far. Kazakhstan, they just yes. straight up kicked, they kicked the ass of their military and police. Like they yep. caught them, beat them down. Enough. <laughs> exactly. They've, ha so, they've had enough. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, so the question was posed, like, how come America, like, there are no, none of these uprisings in America. You don't see all the, you know, riots and all that stuff like you do in many parts of the world. Or, you know, why are the American people being so chill? I'll tell you why. I yes. know exactly why. There's one reason why. Well, two reasons, really. One, because we have all the guns in the world. Okay. And the other yep. reason, the other reason is because Donald J. Trump asked us and Q asked us to chill. They asked us to get out of the way. They're taking yeah, care so of it. Yeah, so they all. could do their job. So they can do their job. Because if we all get down, because let me tell you, you see what's going on in other countries, right? When there's mass protests and uprisings. Imagine all those people with guns. Exactly. That's, that's what would happen in this country, all right? If, yep. the, if, if the people, if the people would really riot in this country, it would be all over. It would just be mm -hmm. madness because it wouldn't yeah. be, we wouldn't be throwing, you know, railings and chairs and, you know, smoke, little smoky, whatever, Molotov cocktails and stuff. They'd be literally like bullets flying. And the government yeah. here knows that. And that's one reason why they're sort of coming at us with the communist shit, but sort of like, you know, they keep sticking their feet in the fire and then pulling it out and then sticking it. You know, they're, they're testing <laughs> us left and right just to see how far they can go. They're trying. Yeah, say, they're trying, yeah. but it's the guns. And I've argued with this with my neighbors, with all kinds of people. And I live like in the biggest lemming neighborhood of Pittsburgh in Squirrel Hill. Okay. Um, yes, Denise is prepared with the Second Amendment. <laughs> I like that. I love it. I always <laughs> feel safe when I'm in the U.S. Always feel safe. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, but it was so funny because, you know, growing up in, in Romania when I was a child, um, the word on, on America, and this is over in Europe too, not just Romania, but in Austria, same thing, right? That, oh my God, America, they're killing each other in the streets. Everybody has guns, boom, boom, boom. And then we came to America. We came here on July 1st, right? And literally all we're yeah. hearing is boom, boom in the streets. We're like, what the fucking gunfire? They really are killing each other in the streets. Because, well, I didn't know what 4th of July was. So that's what was going oh, fireworks. Wow. <laughs> it was fireworks. Oh, People setting wow. off M80s and, you know, bottle rockets. No way. <laughs> I swear to God. That's yeah. crazy. So, you we know, were like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. what is going on? Yeah, right. Yeah. We were like, fuck, they really are killing each other in the streets. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody hide. Oh, that right. is funny. Right, right. What, that would have been an interesting conversation in the moment. But it was it was a shock. It was it was a culture shock coming to America more so than it was from Romania to Austria, and that was a culture shock because we went from like a totally oppressive communist government to a Western socialist kind of open society, right, in Austria, and and you know then coming here, and we thought Austria was crazy, you know. Then we came to America, and it was like holy cow, you know. <laughs> and my first impression of America was not a good one. I mean, we moved to Hazelwood. Really? Well, we moved to Hazelwood below the tracks. And those on here who are in Pittsburgh, they know what I'm talking about. It, it, was, it, it wasn't like 
the, the steel mills. So this, you know, Pittsburgh used to be the steel city and the steel mills were still running down there. We had a dust twice a day because you had this black soot that would just constantly would be falling, you know. And we came here from Vienna, Austria, which is one of the most beautiful cities in the world. So my impression yeah. of America was like, we left Vienna for this, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. But then, you know, once once we got here. And, and of, of course, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh of all places. Well, I mean, like I said, it was the seal city. It's not like we moved to Beverly Hills, <laughs> you know. So are you hearing yes, anything it will, about Denise. this? I just saw uh, I haven't Absolutely. heard anything new about it yet, Denise. Uh, with Nassar, Canada Nassar. will be a part of that. Oh, that, yes, yes, yes. Well, you know what? I yeah. heard, I didn't hear all of Canada. I heard, yes. they, they said some of the Western provinces. I think where you are, I think is going to be, uh, but well, not you, all of it. What I think, here's my, just my personal opinion, Denise, honestly about this. And I've told you, Attila, too. I think the way it's going to be rolled out, I know we keep saying, oh, overnight, we're going to wake up one morning. It's all going to be rolled out and things are going to happen. and The RV happens. I, I personally think it's going to be a slow roll where one province at a time, one state at a time, all of a sudden you're going to hear like, wait, no taxes here? When did that happen? You know, just slowly. Yeah. Like, so, and remind me to bring up uh, the newest update on mandates in Canada. Premiers here in Canada already dropping mandates. Just new in on our way back. I heard about it. So let me bring that up and let me sure. show that when we're done. Okay, keep talking. I'll, I'll find it. <laughs> keep talking. <laughs> keep talking. Well, I was, I was actually waiting for you to drop the Canada stuff. So. <laughs> oh, I, can I don't want to go Canada, off on another so. story now and then we have to circle back. Like, right, you know, right. like our favorite peppermint patty likes to say. The circle back girl. Praise yeah, God. Absolutely. Right. And I do, you know what? I, I want to throw something out real quick, only because Denise is on here. I want to understand. I want to okay, understand. I want to understand why people are so threatened by the idea of a flat earth. Like, you ever notice if you say anything about the flat earth, people are like, oh my God, you're crazy. How can you believe that crap? And, and, you know, right. I, don't, I don't advocate for either. I really don't because I haven't seen it with my own eyes, okay? If no. I could go up there and see it with my own eyes, then I'd be like, that fucker's flat or that fucker's round. You know what I mean? Like, if I could do that, I would. <laughs> right. But I don't exactly. know. Exactly. I don't know. And here's the thing. I have been lied to, and not just me, you, everybody on here, everybody in the world has been lied to about everything. We have been lied to about every single thing. So why would it be such a stretch? that one day we wake up and say, oh shit, the world is flat. You know what I mean? Like, would that change your life in any way? I posted about flat earth and I was destroyed. <laughs> yeah, I know. So I, see, I can't seen that find it. I can't find it. I'm pretty sure I shared it to myself so I could show you guys it. But it, the, the, the update is, is that, um, uh, what, okay, can you, you help me out here until I show What's you her, her face. Ooh. Tell me, she is a, isn't she, um, this girl, she's a uh, lawyer or some... Oh, yeah, yeah, she is. She's a, I don't remember her name, but she's really good. She's really good. She's big in the U.S. Yeah, and yeah. she, okay, so she just came on. She was on Rumble. Uh, yeah, I got awesome. the update. Yeah, she just dropped it in the last hour that Saskatchewan's premier or whatever, um, he has dropped the mandates as of today. Nice. I don't think Saskatchewan even knows yet, to tell nice. you the truth. Nice. So if you live in Saskatchewan, please find that out and please start acting Spreading like it is dropped. Yeah. Dro drop it. You know like you I went in. You know what? Even stop complying. It, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Do I, not I went comply. into every store today. I, I went into every Lee, store today. Lee, uh, with Lee Dundas? Dundas? Is that it? That's her name? Karen um, Phillips said her name is Lee Dundas. I hope I'm saying that right. Oh, okay. But, uh, yes. Yeah. Thank you, Karen. That's probably her. So I, I, I just don't know. I, her I went into every store today without a mask. I'm like, Facebook Good. booted me off this live. Wow. Mm -hmm. I've had people say that literally all day today. Is people they just kept getting booted and kept getting booted off of here. So probably every time we drop drop a trigger word to tell up. But anyways, I'm sure I, I've already I just, dropped a few just by saying Medici, or Borgia, or Rothschild. Marlene, Premier Mo. <laughs> Yeah, right. So, yeah, it happened as of now. She just dropped it on Rumble. I will put it down here That's in the awesome. chat later. But yeah, so I and I went into every store today and I'm like, if you even come at me right now, come at me with your mask, come at me Marlene with your wrote, mandate, I will take it. I will take my business elsewhere. Marlene wrote Premier Mo. I thought he said in the near future. 
So I was told, trigger yeah, words, I was told earth, today it happened. <laughs> yeah. Well, flat let's see, maybe it happens again. <laughs> Probably. Denise cracks, me up. Denise cracks me up because she'll sit there and like, she'll post all the stuff about flat earth and then argue with people. And I'm like, why do you waste your time arguing with them? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I, I don't, I, I, won't, right? I refuse to argue with anybody on Facebook. And this is why, this is why. It, it's nothing, you spend all day typing back and forth. And then it yeah. turns into the great link wars where all you do is share, sending your link and he's sending his link. And you guys, nobody looks or opens the link to look at the information. You just go into the link wars. And there's yeah. no bigger waste of time than sitting on Facebook and just typing back and forth, arguing, because it can go on for days because then somebody else jumps in and then somebody else jumps in. And before you know it, you got 18 yeah. people arguing in there. So I will, ridiculous. Not, I will not argue. If anybody comes on my, on my page, and starts running their fucking mouth and argue. You know what? You're gone. Yep. I will ban your yep. ass. You want to debate? You know me. what? I, you want to debate I, me? Get on with me one on one. We can debate face to face. I'll debate anybody, anybody, yeah. except except maybe for uh, Stephen Crowder. He is an incredible debater. I don't know if you well, know, you know Stephen what? Crowder. I, I, do you know Stephen Crowder? I don't think so. Do you, you know what? If I do, I'm bad with names. So if well, if I if I've seen him. It's possible. I just am not recognizing the name. Anyone the, who knows the, me is like, names don't work. I just, I don't. The, but, you know, I've done the it, same thing. I've posted something, and I'm like, I see the debate going on. I forget that it's my own post, and I'll post the, the <laughs> popcorn emoji, and then I'm like, oh, wait a minute. It was my <laughs> post. Well, I'm just going to sit here and watch this. Well, when, yeah, that's all I do. When two people start fighting, two of my friends yeah. start fighting, I just sit back. I'm like, whatever. Uh, no, but Stephen yeah, Crowder. Exactly. Stephen Crowder has a show called Louder with Crowder. You can find it on YouTube and, you know, he's getting, he got banned all kinds of times. That show is hilarious. It is hilarious. And Steven is actually Canadian and he lives down in the no U.S. No way. Now. Yeah, he's from Montreal. Of course. I think he's from Montreal. And, of uh, course, that's amazing. You, you know what's great? He'll make fun of Justin Trudeau every time, you know, he starts speaking in French. He's like, I understand <laughs> what that little cocksucker's saying. So, you know, it just, <laughs> that's true. It just makes so fun Karen says Lee Dundas is a human rights lawyer, so they yes. are in deep trouble. Um, okay, so she probably is connected with this Christopher then, because he is. Uh, uh, what was what was his um, his credentials? But I'm guessing they working together. I'm guessing they're working because man, are they pit bulls? They have got their shit together, man. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. No, look, the bad guys are going down. There's no question about it. Yeah. And everything we're it, looking it's at done. now is fake. It's so done. I'm going to throw this out. I'm going to throw this out, and this is just conspir total conspiracy theory on my part. I'm not saying any of this is true. I'm just throwing out a what if scenario. Okay. That's all this is. Yeah. Don't take it seriously. Okay. Don't go running with it. I Don't probably go will. It. But, but this is just a what if. Okay. So Joe Biden came to Pittsburgh yesterday. Right. And well, the fake Joe Biden came to Pittsburgh yesterday. And, uh, you know, the bridge collapses yesterday morning. Interestingly enough, there was a two hour delay. So there were no children with school buses out on the roads when the bridge collapsed. Luckily, the traffic wasn't big, right? So the bridge collapses, but we knew Joe Biden was coming to town to talk about his infrastructure plans, his Build Back Better shit. And the day he comes here, of all the days, one of our 460 or whatever bridges collapses. We haven't had a bridge collapse in a while. I can't remember the last time a bridge Whoa. collapsed. Whoa, ironic. So, I'm just saying, so what if the bridge was not, it's, it's a false flag, okay? What if it's the bad guys who created a false flag? Because, you know, they love to create false flags. But it was actually done by the White Hats to make it look like they created the false flag. And they're going to, if the media starts talking about this at all, then we know I'm on the right track. But again, this is just a crazy conspiracy theory on my, on my part. So. What if this is used to drip to the media? And we know the White Hats control the media now. They're going to start dripping this out there and reveal the false flag, that this was actually a false flag done by the Biden administration to try to push through their Build Back Better bullshit, blah, 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 blah. It catches wind. So now Biden has to go and testify in front of, in front of Senate. And once he goes in front of there, it's all wide open. They can ask him about anything. So it would be to me a great way to bring him down once and for all, get him out of there, like they want to do and remove him anyway, without using the 25th Amendment. So it could be. Again, this is just a crazy conspiracy theory on my part. But if it happens, remember you heard it here first. 
Because <laughs> it sounds so outlandish that only could happen in Hollywood. But he could literally be, they could have, so like I said, this is kind of crazy because I do believe that Biden is controlled by the White Hats. Okay, this this fake Biden, yeah. Biden this imposter guy who's pretending to be him is being controlled by the White Hats. So they create this false flag. But you notice nobody was hurt, right? When you had real false flags, people died. In Las Vegas, yeah. people got shot. In every other shooting, you know, people died. In this one, yeah. nobody got hurt. I mean, we had a bus fall down, <laughs> a bus and like four cars fell down with this bridge and nobody was hurt. Amen to that. So yeah. what if the White, the White Hats brought this down, created the false flag, and then they used the false flag to pin it on Biden, and then they, they you know, drip it to the media. The media starts talking about it. Before you know it, it turns into Watergate, right? And, uh, you know, Nixon got removed for a lot less. So I'm just saying that, you know, as crazy as this They're sounds, trying to do it right. They're trying to do it the right way so that, like you said, we don't piss off the largest army in the world, and that's you guys. Right, right. So, you know, you could be peacefully taken down, and they could, maybe they could finally, you know, because once he gets in there and, you know, the Senate starts hammering him, uh, man, you know, all kinds of questions can come up. You know, you can have questions about Barista. You can have questions about Ukraine. You can have questions about, uh, you know, where is Hunter? <laughs> we can have, you know, all sorts of stuff can come up, you know. Uh, what happened to those rape yep. charges? You know, the women could show up. So who knows, man? Blew up the bridge. Right. Empty cars, buses on bridge. It could have been, Denise. It could have been, you know. So yeah. anyway, I just it, wanted to throw that out there that just in case, you know. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And I mean, you've, we've talked, we talked about it last time that I think, Hey, Brenda, Brent, what's up, Brenda? So I think, I think that's, that's, uh, I've talked about it before, but I've seen proof of this being over already, but you oh, know, yeah. in my opinion, just like wars, you know how the wars uh, ended and two years later, the people in their home countries still thought the war was going on. Sure. That is truly in my gut again conspiracy theorists but we got to come up with something because all our shit's coming true so we got to think of some something but i think the majority of this is over and we cannot have it we can, we cannot have our freedom till we get it like there's too much of this mentality that we're just going to wait and i said this on one of my lives today i said canada i am so amazed because this is not a canadian thing to do the what happened to, is happening right now in canada is not normal for Canada. And that's what's so amazing. Uh, my brother Stan visited Red Deer a bit tonight as we went out a while. That's amazing, Brenda. I, I know you know this, but I was in, in Edmonton all day. Um, but it was, um, I think it's over, but I don't think it's time to tell everybody until, until we have gone our freedom back because Canada is that country that just wants to wait just wants to wait for someone to come free us, just wants to wait for someone to just end this all. And today well, proved that we're not going to do that anymore. That, that's the whole West though. You have to understand that's all Western mentality, okay? In Eastern Europe, in Asia, in Africa, in, in South America, you see riots because the people are pushed so far that they don't have anything to lose. See, you people yeah. in the West, you've been given things. So you yeah. have something to lose. And they figured out that's the thing about these controllers, whether it's the Rothschilds, Rockefellers, you know, Medici's, whoever, you know, they figured out that you have to give people just enough to lose. Allow them the illusion of freedom. Allow them the illusion that they own their house, that they own their car, which you don't. But they give you, they, they allow you the illusion that you actually have ownership and give you something to lose. And if you have something to lose, uh, you're not going to riot. Okay, this was my argument with people about the ghettos in America all the time. I said, okay, you call this a ghetto? I mean, okay, maybe it is, but you go into the ghetto, they all have food, they all have TVs, they all have, uh, you know, a place to live, they all have uh, nice clothes on. Okay, you want to see a real ghetto? Go into Southeast Asia or anywhere, you know, <laughs> in Africa, you'll see ghettos. Okay, the refugee camp, even where I lived for a year, wasn't a ghetto compared to those ghettos. Okay. And we had to literally stand for three meals a day for handouts and stuff like that. You wore whatever clothing you could get your hands on, right? Whatever yeah. they gave you. So, um, so that's why the West has gotten so soft. The West has soft. They're soft. You know, I came to America. I couldn't believe yeah. how soft Americans were. You know, I was expecting yeah. like you know, I was expecting John Wayne's America, John Wayne's America, and I and yeah, I came here exactly. And, and it got softened down even since the 80, 1980 when we moved here. And again, it's yeah. by design. They made sure that you have enough to lose that 
you know, once you got something to lose, you're going to be like, well, you know, I can't, um, I can't do this. I can't do that because I, I need to feed my kids. I'm like, look, my parents left. They have two kids. We left Romania. Okay. It was, it, it was very hard to get out of Romania, but they took, they left with two kids. They left behind a cushy career. My parents were both in a symphony. Okay. So as far as communism goes and living in communism, we had it good. We really did compared to yeah. like 90% of the population. It was still shit, yeah. but you know, by comparison, but so they gave all that up to come out here. And my mom worked in a fish factory for a while. My dad was janitor and he did whatever he could to survive and put food on the table. Right. But they made the move. They, we left everything behind. Literally we left Romania with a couple suitcases filled with clothes. That's it. That's all we had. That's it. You know, and just enough money to hail a cab from Vienna's airport to an apartment building where friends of my parents live. So there is, you know, you, there is no excuse for giving in to tyranny. There just isn't. Okay. Saying that, well, I got kids to feed. This is not a good enough excuse because you're teaching them the worst example possible. You're teaching them obedience. You're teaching mm -hmm. them to be a sheep. Okay. You yep. can always find a reason to be a sheep. I can always find oh, a reason easy. to be a sheep. Very easy. Yeah. yeah. But there's only one reason for freedom. And that's, you're not going to take any shit from any government out there because governments, let me tell you, and I don't give a shit what country we're talking about. The government of every single nation on earth is the number one organized crime in that country. Okay. Yes. You want to talk about Rico statues against the Italian mafia from Sicily or the Chinese mafia or this and that. Fuck that. Those, they're, playing kids games compared to the number to the governments in every country. They are that yeah. country's top dog criminal organization. And the sooner people right. understand that, you know, the freer they'll be. Yeah, exactly. And, and I think, and that's, and Amanda, she's on here. She's commenting. She's my best friend. She's up in uh, uh, Grand Prairie doing the same rally stuff. She, she had her kids with her. She has four awesome. kids under, you know, and she, she had, I don't know if she had them all with her, but no, no matter what, she, I, I got a message from her this morning saying, I've got a babysitter and I'm going to fight for my kids. That's awesome. And I made videos today for Christian. And I'm like showing him, sending him videos going and even saying someday you're going to see this buddy. Like th this is, this is for you. And yeah. this is for our kids. This, this is, uh, it's That's time what it's all about. to it's, show it's really our kids. It's all about your children. It's about the children. All about the kids right and now. And I'm not even talking about you know, the children in the dumbs and all the children who've been freed, the hundreds of thousands of children who they've rescued over the last year. I'm not even talking about them. I'm and remind the me later, remind yeah, me later to fill you in on another dream I had last night. It was another dream and it had to do with what's coming next for the kids. Well, so, you can talk about it now if you want. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know. I don't know. I've told a few people, but I do get dreams and I get a lot of, um, dreams that kind of give me a lot of information in terms of what's coming and what we need to be prepared for um and how to best make decisions going forward denise is like tell us <laughs> um I, i've been i've been actually debating starting a channel on this because i get i get dream channels and i know when they're channeling info dreams yeah they're like prophecy dreams um very interesting dreams because it's info and i can tell it's info because I'm, I don't recognize the people in it. It's, it's set up scenarios. I mean, the, the last tornado dream I was told, holy shit, I just thought of something. Okay, so I told you about my tornado dreams, right, Attila? I don't know. <laughs> okay, Man. so I, I have had tornado dreams for seven, uh, eight years, and every year. Are you doing yes, it full color? Yes, absolutely, Denise. Oh, okay. Full color, I was just yes. just asking for Denise. Uh, yeah. Yeah, good. Thank you. Because some I can see her comments, but for some reason nobody else's. So if you see mm. any questions I'm missing, let me know. Okay. Um, but the, I have had tornado dreams for five years, and every time they're stronger, more dangerous, more scary. And this is like before tornadoes any, going through. Yeah, like you, you get caught up yep. in them or what? Yep. I I'm usually it was either well the first ones, and I won't get into it because it's a long story, and I might do some videos and post them on YouTube about this and okay. actually talk about these dreams, but I'll go into a short synopsis of these dreams. It started with seeing seeing tornadoes far away in the distance, like way out there. I'm like, wow, that's a big storm, but it was far away. That was like five years ago. Are you like and at your house during these events? 
Are you at your? I was in different you... settings. Different okay. settings. Sometimes it was. Sometimes it wasn't. But is it um, settings you know, or is it like you're like, holy shit, where am I? Some. Some are settings I know. Some are not. Some okay. are. Some are examples of settings. Like let's say, um, like one, for example, one was at the ranch I grew up on. But instead of our our cabin we were in the house watching, it was a high rise building that we were oh, watching. Okay. So it's like different setups. But anyways, um, each time I would dream every couple of months, it was a bigger dream. Um, and uh, yes, Karen, that's true. It's ridiculous. But anyways, I would see them and every like time it was, yeah, he's not around. So they, yeah, what like are the they arrested. supposed to do? Yeah. All right. Yeah. When you hear somebody goes into, uh, when you, anytime you hear somebody is in, you know, because of COVID they're, in whatever they call it, quarantine. That's code. Yeah, it means code, code for being for arrested. arrested. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. sorry. Let's go back. So so the dreams got more intense and 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 um and then about time the the COVID happened was when the dreams started to get more intense in terms of losing people, like the tornadoes would take people. Uh, I was out there trying to rescue people and it was really intense. Um but fast forward the last dream I had and I was told specifically that this was the last one and i just thought of it now i didn't know what it was i told a few people i said i was told to last night that it was the last dream that i would get about tornadoes and that it's over and the storms it's done and here's what happened is we were all sitting uh or we are all in this high-rise building looking and observing um, I, I remember, you know how it was bright daylight. That's how it was set up. It was bright daylight. We're outside doing our stuff. And all of a sudden it went pitch black, like dark. And I went, right. I got the chills. I got the goosebumps. And I went, oh my gosh, it's back. It's here. And I, everyone's running inside. And I ran outside because I needed to know where it was going to be this time. Mm -hmm. I needed to know where to position everybody. So I went outside. I saw it coming. But it was coming down the valley not to us but coming down the valley like a massive massive like it was miles and miles long miles and miles wide taking the whole valley but w there wasn't one bit of wind not one bit of wind okay. and um it was calm absolutely calm where we were standing so we all went inside it was a oh, high-rise right. building Denise says she has a friend who interprets dreams, so she'll introduce I love you. it. I, and, and so usually what I do, Denise, is when I wake up, I, I channel the dream. I find out interpretations. But why I'm telling you this is because I just realized a, another part of this dream and what it means. I, I didn't know that this trucker thing was coming. Okay, this was a few weeks ago that I had this dream. Mm -hmm. But we all went into the high rise. We were looking out the windows, observing, and we could see there it was no wind. It was dead calm. The building wasn't shaking. The building wasn't, it was such a big tornado. It was bigger than we had ever seen of anything before. And down at the end of the valley was picture Sodom and Gomorrah, like what, how you visualize that city, dark, yeah. evil, the no red city. lights, the so evil feeling and the mm -hmm. spiky the spiky towers and every, and all their symbols, all their symbols. And I, we could look down the valley and see it. And you could see, you could see the storm sweeping into that city and destroying it, absolutely mm -hmm. leveling it. There was so much thunder and lightning that you could like this, the noise, you're going to all like start to put the piece together while I'm talking, but the, the noise and the light, and and the the lightning lit it up so much that you could you could see the city the outline of the city just from the lightning nonstop it wasn't there was like 50 500 strikes happening at yeah. once and i was told this will be the last tornado dream you have it it's done they are destroyed and this this little tornado instead of us it was them yeah and i just put it together now that 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 was a convoy yeah i was gonna say you think it has to do with this yeah right. you know let's hope it is the last thing let's hope it is yeah. you know indeed absolutely that's and every dream what... i have so last night was about the kids yeah well that's cool uh, no, yeah last night it was about the kids and um um we're gonna need to set up a lot of programs um for these kids because um 
the ones I was in charge of, I, I haven't figured it out. I'm going to do some, I'm going to dive deep a little bit on this because it had to do with some kids that didn't even know how to act in society. They had mm. just been taught to like kill each other. Mm. Like I came into the room. It was, it, I don't even want to go into details on this one, but it, it was pretty gruesome. And I went and it, it was, they didn't know any different. Right. So a lot of like rehabilitation of is going to be happening. A lot of rehabilitation is going to be needed, guys. So n enough sitting on your asses feeling fucking sorry for yourselves. Pardon my French. You are here for a reason, and it's time to, like, figure out what that is because you're needed. You're needed, yeah. and you need to figure out what that is. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so to circle back to the NHL real quick, and not yeah. just the NHL, not just the NHL, all the leagues, okay? So... I don't, I don't believe this movement, this trucker movement was organic. I don't, I don't think it was. It, it may have been, but there's money behind it is what I'm saying. Some of it. Uh, because, some of it was organic, well, like my cousins it, it or whatever. You know what I mean? No, no. The well, organization what I'm, saying, of it. what I'm saying is there were probably a couple of truckers who sat around at one time and said, you know what, fuck this. We should drive to Ottawa and blah, blah, blah. Right? <laughs> and, and somebody yeah. got wind of that. And then somebody with money yeah. got wind of that and said, you know what? Yeah, I'll I agree. There, there's always, there's, <clears throat> there's, there's never been an organic movement ever, right? It, it, there's always like the French Revolution didn't just happen on its own because people got sick of you know this or that yeah. uh, of Louis the Sixteenth um, right. and Marie Antoinette. No, it, it happened. People did get sick of it, but like at any other time, there was money behind it, right? Yeah. So the thing about the these these leagues, not a single mention from the NFL or the NHL. I don't watch the NBA, but I'm assuming no mention from them either. Not a single mention at all from any of them about what's going on in Canada with the truckers. Not a single mention. Now, if George Soros's money was behind them pushing their Black Lives or their Antifa garbage, then they would mm -hmm. be getting down on one knee and protesting and doing all this shit that you know they do, uh, and and pushing it at every other commercial. But but since this benefits us, and it wasn't from the globalists, not a single person, not a single person, talks about it. Except I will say that Canada's true president. Don Cherry, or Prime Minister, I guess you guys have a Prime Minister, right? <laughs> is he a Prime Minister or is he President? He's Prime Minister, right? Prime Minister, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. I was so, wondering, have you heard Don Cherry? I have not, I've been out of touch with the NHL world. Has he said anything? Oh, Don Cherry's on the side of the truckers, 100%. I love it. He's, came, I, he's, I, he's I, come I, on I, and said it. Oh, I'm you knew surprised. he would be. Come on, it's Don I Cherry. I did, I did, but <laughs> you, so, you don't know. You don't know. You don't know. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so with Don, let me let me put it this way: with Don, I, <laughs> with Don, I kind of know where he, you know. But and you but, know what? You're but, right. He's been a rebel of the media for a while. Yeah, and but the one thing surprised me is that he took the vaccine and a couple of shots, a couple of uh, boosters or whatever. But he did come out and say, "Look, I took it because I wanted to, but I would never tell you or anybody else what to do." Mm -hmm. So he, you know, but he said he's in 100% supporting the truckers, you know, and Love he wasn't it. the only one. There were a couple, there were a couple old time players who really don't have anything to do with the league anymore who've come out. And, and, but, you know, we're Sidney Crosby. We're yeah. all the Canadian players, right? Yeah. Uh, you won't hear a word out of them. Mom's the word, you know? Don't, and this, don't and tell me they don't know. Leagues. Don't tell oh, me they don't know. On. They're going right, to lose their right. jobs. They're going to get kicked right. out. The, they do of course they say you know, and and you know and, and, and the nhl is canada's league okay yeah. it's canada's league it's but canada's again, thing uh, yeah, where are they again you know they're where are they're, they? they're they're now you know who owns them uh, by mm -hmm. what programs and what should they push you know so that's yep. pretty disgusting and i just wanted to throw one interesting thing in there because a couple of my liberal friends and i we used to argue about this all the time because they were constantly like I'm moving to Canada. I'm moving to Canada. You know, America is such a racist country, blah, blah, blah. You know, typical shit, right? No, I swear to God. They had this impression that Canada was a utopia compared to us. And, and you know, America is, of course, racist and the worst country on earth, right? The whole country was built on slavery, blah, blah, blah. So according to them. So interesting tidbit, and you can look this up. The Canadian government, and this was done quietly. I posted about this on Facebook about five years ago. The Canadian government wouldn't allow the indigenous women, you know, the native American women in Canada, to take their children home from the hospital. When you give birth as a native woman, you had to get, what's it called, snipped? Or is that just for guys? What, what happens with women where you can't have kids anymore? Do they snip something there? I know with guys, it's a, it's a, <laughs> it's 
the snip thing. Yeah. What is it with women? Is it the same kind of thing or? It would, well, yeah. I forget what it's called. It would, oh, Theo Fleury. Yes. yes, thank you, Marlene. Theo Fleury. Yeah, he's another guy who's behind the truckers. Yeah, he was the other guy I saw. So anyway, you have to agree to be basically fixed. So you cannot have any more children before you're allowed to take your child home if you're a Native American woman wow. in Canada. That was absolute truth. That was under Trudeau. That, that tube was, side, uh, yes. Thank you, Marlene. That was what I was trying to say. Yeah, tube side, yes. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah exactly. So, you know, and, and but again, you know, this, like, nobody talked about it. It was all hush-hush. I posted on Facebook all over it. I was all over yeah. this shit because I'm like, you know, look, if you think America is so racist, why aren't you saying a word about Canada and what that government is doing to the natives there? You oh, know? it's bad. It's bad. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, like I said, my you gotta have your, you're only allowed to have one child, then you got to get your tubes tied. That's fucked up. And they wouldn't give you your child unless you do it. And then how do you know, how do you even know they're giving you the right child anymore after knowing what we know about the child yep. trafficking and all this shit? That and how doing. many kids go missing? Oh, it's you know what? In the United States, six hundred thousand kids go missing a month. In the United States, yeah, six hundred thousand children go. missing And that's a not month. counting all the stillborn babies. Right. No, no, we're talking about children who are born and you know, yeah, get you know stolen off the street or whatever. 600,000 yep. a month. That's like 72 or 7.2 million children, probably That's, closer to 8 million. By and now. where are these kids going? Really? Come on. Like, give somebody and, and give me an idea found. that's not conspiracy. Like, give me something. You can't. Yeah. You can't answer no, that question. No. no. Uh, Denise that's says, what percentage, what percentage of truckers are striking? I don't even know if we can call this striking, Denise, because a lot of these truckers just lost their job because they can't go across the border. Second of all, a lot of these truckers actually, um, so, some of these truckers are having breaks right now. A lot of them are privately owned. So they're just, I, I would like a trucker to answer this question. I don't think it would be called striking so much as just laying siege to the Ottawa, to city, to the capital. Um, so I would like a trucker to answer that question if we have one on here is if they know the percentage, if somebody knows the percentage, I will get that question answered because I, I can't answer that. I don't know. Um, and I would like to know that as well. So good question, Denise. Thank you. And I will come back on that and I'll put that in here. And I'm seeing even today, uh, they talked about this. Uh, where, where, I forget where they were talking about it. I see so many damn things that, man, my, it all like blends into one long thing, right? But um, yes. they were saying Florida was saying, hey, bring your ships here. Don't go to yep. California. Because, I, oh, you know, it was on Wendy's show, actually, on Wendy's show. They were talking about, there was they, she had somebody from Florida on there, and he was saying, bring it, bring the ships to Florida. Don't go to California. Because I don't know if you see, now they're attacking trains in Florida. Or, I mean, in, um, in California. They're literally attacking and uh, stealing, you know, supplies off of trains. Um, wow. You know, it, it's that state. They've done about more damage to that state than any other place around the world, I think, man. It's amazing because yeah. California is gorgeous. If you've ever been there, it California is. is beautiful. It really is. Well, I, I'm, I'm told the energy there, like in terms of like energy influence, it's, it's a very powerful, energetic state. And there's seven chakras of the world all the way around the world. Seven chakras. Uh, or is there more? I think there's maybe 12 chakras. But California being one of the highly energetic places of the U.S., and that is why the dark, deep state people took took siege of that place to control. Remember, they cannot create. We talked about this right, last right, right. Sunday. They cannot create. So what do they do? They lay, lay siege, and they take what we've created. Right. California is one of those things. Um, is one of the most beautiful, energetic places on earth, and they that's why they're there. The sun's weird it's, in California, though. It is. The is sun's it? weird in California. It is it a, a 5D boat. sun? I don't is know. It? It's, it's, it's definitely, though, like when you hear somebody I'm gonna say. I'm going to have to go see for myself. When you hear somebody say. I've been that, told I need well, to go. So maybe when, this when year. When you hear somebody say that it's the Golden State or whatever, you understand why. The sun looks different. It really, it's a, it's a very golden. Really? Especially, especially as it gets later in the day, say 4, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock. Really? You know, when the That's sun starts going down, it creates, yeah, it's, it's a very, uh, very weird, but it's cool, you know. But you pay so we're at an hour. Price. We're at an hour, Rotilla. What okay, do we, we want to wrap, wrap it up? up? Do you want to? Okay. Yeah. So we said we wanted to keep it in an hour, guys. We're gonna yep. do this once a week. So yep. we're gonna upload Saturday these nights. on YouTube as well. 
Saturday nights. We need a name, though. We need a name. <laughs> right. So, if you can think of a name for this show. <laughs> yes. Whatever it is. We need a know. name for this show. Um, we'll think of something. Maybe I'll get a dream. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but it, it's uh I think I, I think it's time I, I do some dream series. Go for um it. yeah, I think it's time. <laughs> I you know what? I'm um, jealous because I can't remember my dreams ever. Ever. I wake up it's Well, so I told you, get back on the gel. It really helps. Why do you think I take my gel just before I go to bed? Because I do I like my dreams ready. and I <laughs> I know. <laughs> I like my dreams. You know what? Once anyways, the army goes um, through, I'll have plenty of gel. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> So is there anything else we want to kind of wrap it up besides, um, guys, yeah, look, it's I'm time just to treat this people, country like there's no mandates. I'm just going to remind people once again, buy as much silver as you can. Buy, 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 buy silver now. Okay, silver. XRP. If you need to know where to get silver, Attila and I got you covered. Right. Call and uh, silver and XRP. Buy yourself some XRP. Uh, those are two things you're going to yeah. need for the new world. And it is a new world coming of Jasara Nasara. It's a new world with the currency revaluations with the US note is that's going to be replacing the US dollar. Yep. Get yourself, go online, look up what it is. Gold, uh, what is it called? Go do uh, your own research if you don't believe yeah. us. Just go yeah. look. What is it exactly. called? Uh, the, the rainbow currency, right? Another name for the, uh, the US note, which is now going to be US yep. Treasury note as opposed to the Federal Reserve note. So um, go, yes, look it up. go look it up. It's a whole new world coming. Some of you on here are And in order to it. Yeah, in order to support the truckers and what's going on, this is this is not when this is over. This is how it's going to be now. This is it's done. Yeah. We're done. I will not go into a store unless if they don't serve me the way I am as I am, then I will leave and take my money elsewhere. I believe we should all do the same. If you're a business owner, rip that sticker off your door that says yep. mass, put a trucker sticker on and serve everybody equally. Doesn't matter what they are, who they are, because we will have wasted this entire ambition of the truckers if we do not resist take this correct, forward. Denise. Yes, resist, exactly. Resist, resist. Exactly. Right. So that was a good chat. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Thanks Bye, for Judy. Bye, doing everyone. this. Yep. Have a good night. We'll talk to you later. Well, I'm sure we'll see y'all tomorrow. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.